Should the kidneys matter to SLPs? Absolutely. SLPs should be familiar with renal failure or chronic kidney disease, CKD for short, and end-stage renal disease, since this can affect various body systems. Shouldn't surprise us by now that speech-language pathology is truly a whole body profession, but understanding some of the specifics from head to toe is a lot to commit to. So today, I'm going to introduce you to a brief overview of how CKD can impact three domains of speech-language pathology. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, kidney disease can impact cognition. Cognitive impairment is actually pretty common in people with CKD. In fact, research shows that cognitive impairment increases in prevalence with CKD, possibly affecting up to 60% of patients with this diagnosis. This also increases the risk of a dementia diagnosis, as this is more common in individuals with end-stage renal disease. Specific domains of cognition such as executive function, working memory, and attention have even been found to be impacted by kidney disease. This can affect decision-making, medication adherence, comprehension, and even how patients with CKD engage with healthcare. If you work with patients who are on dialysis because of end-stage renal disease, you probably know not to see that patient right after dialysis because oftentimes they're tired and can't remain fully awake and alert. It's important for SLPs to understand that the timing of assessments, treatment, and education is crucial for these patients. Several studies have actually looked at the timing of cognitive testing relative to dialysis. Some studies have shown that cognitive function gets worse immediately after dialysis, with the greatest cognitive impairment presenting itself around 67 hours after dialysis. Studies with a greater amount of time between their testing showed no difference in cognitive functioning, suggesting that dialysis had a temporary effect, particularly in attention to cognitive function. Knowing this, it's worth considering when and how we provide medical education and therapy to our patients who are on dialysis. Not all people are the same, of course, so this does not mean that every single patient you have who is on dialysis needs more than 67 hours to return to their baseline cognitive function and not every SLP will have that much time to wait and see patients. This is just good information to know when you go in to do an assessment, therapy session, or provide education and how to best schedule your sessions around their dialysis schedule. Why would hemodialysis impact cognition? Well, these patients undergo large fluid shifts during dialysis and acute hemodynamic changes or changes in blood flow and arterial pressure. Remember, hemodialysis is a process that essentially pumps your blood out, filters the blood, and pumps it back into your body. It also helps to get rid of extra fluids and aims to improve chemical equilibrium. In the most simple terms, this cleans patients' blood. When your kidneys aren't functioning to filter your blood from waste, salts, and other fluids, hemodialysis is a mechanical alternative that will do it for you. Whereas dialysis might lead to short-term cognitive impairment without treatment, Kidney disease can result in long-term or permanent global cognitive deficits. This has been found to be more common in patients with a history of vascular disease as well, possibly due to an increased probability of polyvascular damage in both the kidney and brain. When I was doing mobile fees in nursing homes, this was an important piece to my assessment process. It's not uncommon for nursing home residents to receive dialysis, so not only did we have to make sure I wasn't scheduled at the same time as dialysis, but it was best to avoid the entire day even after the return from dialysis because of how this impacted them both cognitively and with their level of alertness. Several of my SLP friends have shared stories about being consulted to evaluate a patient as soon as they return from dialysis, only to get nowhere because they weren't appropriate. Not only that, but the likelihood of these patients remembering anything that was discussed with them after dialysis wasn't the greatest. Helping patients understand that they or their loved ones might notice a change in the memory or attention after dialysis or even with end-stage renal disease can be helpful for both the patient and their loved ones as they better understand how to set up their environment for better success, whether it's for medication management or simple conversations with friends and family. Number two, kidney disease can impact oral nutrition and swallowing. As I just mentioned, one important thing to consider when it comes to chronic kidney disease or renal failure is how this disease impacts levels of alertness, as I discussed earlier with dialysis. This can impact oral intake and of course our assessment and treatment outcomes. Another thing to consider with this population is salivary hypofunction or reduced salivary production, which can lead to xerostomia or dry mouth. 
Not only can xerostomia be a potential side effect of medications, but many patients with kidney disease are on fluid intake restriction. Other risk factors for xerostomia include advanced age, systemic disorders, and atrophy. While dry mouth might not sound like much, it can create a lot more issues in the CKD population. This can lead to oral lesions, oral infections, dental infections, pneumonia, difficulties chewing, swallowing, tasting, and speaking. Research has even pointed at these negative outcomes of xerostomia, particularly in patients undergoing hemodialysis, suggesting heightened risk associated with xerostomia in this population. It's important to consider the variety of factors that patients with kidney disease are up against, including dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, level of alertness, and even respiratory strength. Patients with chronic kidney disease undergoing dialysis treatment are more likely to experience reduced respiratory strength and pulmonary function, thus impacting their cough strength and ability to protect their lungs. Interestingly, one study suggests that longer duration of hemodialysis is associated with decreased respiratory muscle strength. Some researchers have reported that up to 75% of patients on long-term hemodialysis present with reduced respiratory strength. This could be for several reasons, including body fluid overload, in-between dialysis, and other factors resulting in pulmonary edema and pleural effusion, although this doesn't explain the entire picture. Other studies have suggested that hemodialysis promotes muscle and protein degradation, leading to generalized muscle weakness, including respiratory muscle weakness. So what can SLPs do about this? Why should we care? Well, one study found that inspiratory muscle training with a fixed load significantly improved respiratory muscle strength, functional capacity, lung function, and quality of life in this population. Respiratory muscle strength training is absolutely within our scope of practice and can help with swallowing, airway protection, and voice. One member of the MedSLP Collective had noticed an increase of patients presenting with dysphagia right as their renal function declined and wanted to know if there was a link. Not only was she seeing symptoms of dysphagia with this population, but on fees, she would see aspiration more often in this population. It wouldn't surprise her to have a patient in a sniff who suddenly presented with dysphagia and decline function, leave for the hospital only to return with a diagnosis of CKD or renal failure. Some of our mentors came in and shared their experience and input, noting that increased fatigue, confusion, and overall decline in motor function on top of altered chemistries can absolutely impact swallowing. This led to a realization for many of us that while we may be better versed in neurologic conditions and other diseases that have a more obvious impact on swallowing, like stroke or head and neck cancer, there are a lot of conditions and diseases that are less obvious to us when it comes to dysphagia risk factors. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about kidney function and speech therapy? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. Make sure to stick around to the end to claim a freebie or two. Number three. Kidney disease can affect the voice. I just discussed how renal failure or kidney disease can impact lung function, which can affect swallowing and airway protection, but it can also affect voice. Not only does decreased lung function or reduced respiratory strength impact voice, but end-stage renal disease or severe chronic kidney disease can lead to edema or swelling of the vocal folds. And while there may be edema, several research studies have suggested that chronic hemodialysis patients may have reduced thickness of the plica vocalis, or the vocal fold mucous membrane that's primarily responsible for voice. The decrease in this vocal fold membrane thickness could be the result of dehydration. Electrolyte imbalance from hemodialysis and kidney disease can impact voice. More specifically, uric acid and sodium levels can reduce vocal fold vibration. This has mainly been studied in hemodialysis patients with findings suggesting greater changes in voice after hemodialysis. Research has reported voice changes in 24 to 60% of patients with end-stage renal disease after completion of every hemodialysis session, described as post-dialysis hoarseness. The hoarse vocal quality is found to last for several hours after dialysis. To dig a little deeper, Bilavsky and colleagues found that excessive fluid within the superficial lamina propria of the Reinke space of the vocal folds can occur in patients with end-stage renal disease. Hypervolemia, or fluid overload, can create shortness of breath and edema, which can also impact voice. Some patients might even increase muscle tension within the vocal tract, increasing the risk of dysphonia. We also can't forget the impacts of stress. Patients who rely on dialysis are more likely to experience chronic stress and anxiety with a reduced quality of life, and stress and anxiety have been found to cause or contribute to changes in vocal quality. 
One study conducted by Nesik and, co and colleagues actually explored the connection between psychosomatic state of patients on dialysis and phonation. Per the published article, this investigation showed that the changes of the parameters of voice were induced with the changes of psychophysiological states of the patients on dialysis. On top of that, the investigators found that these patients experienced anticipatory stress before that their dialysis session that induced changes in fundamental frequency and phonation duration. Voice changes could have a significant impact on the already reduced quality of life of those with CKD and who are on hemodialysis, or it may not be at the top of the patient's wish list when it comes to their goals, especially if they have so many other complications going on that impact their quality of life. But it is an important domain of our field to consider when working with this population, especially if there's a risk of vocal fold damage from increased stress or laryngeal tension. Screenings like the Voice Handicap Index have been used in research studies in this population and may be a good place to start when doing your assessments. Ultimately, it's important to remember that it's never just one symptom or one condition we work with when it comes to patients with CKD or end-stage renal failure. We have to look at the entire system, whether it's dehydration, volume overload, electrolyte imbalances, respiratory strength, pulmonary function, dry mouth, cognitive function, or level of alertness, everything is connected. I remember when I first started out as a medical SLP, and I in no way knew how to consider the whole body connection and think about the impacts of impaired kidney function or dialysis on cognition, swallowing, and voice. I tell you this to reassure you that it's absolutely okay if these are things that come as a complete surprise to you. Part of being an SLP is the constant learning and growth. My mind has been blown multiple times and continues to be blown the more I learn about just how important our roles are as SLPs across multiple body systems. I've got a free gift for you over at metaslpcollective.com. You'll get instant access to our free MetaSLP Collective clipboard kit, which includes handouts and resources for swallow evaluations, cognition, lab values, and voice, all things that can be impacted by kidney disease. We have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases inside the MetaSLP Collective. Head over to metaslpcollective.com now to get your hands on this. The link will be in the description below.